Joseph Korngold, aka Joseph Fifke was born on September 10, 1895. Korngold said he was born in Russia although he sometimes said was born in Poland. He became a citizen of the United States in 1921. He lived at 1828 South 59th Street in Chicago. A one-time bodyguard of Louis Diamond Cowan, a Cicero crime boss who got on the wrong side of the mob and was shot dead in October of 1933. Some assumed, reasonably, that he had set Cowan up for assassination. Cowan, a Scottish Jew, was known as a remarkably disciplined, thrifty and hard-working criminal. He was a newsboy, later a news agent in Cicero, became a caller in railroad yards and a tailor in his spare time. Although he owned enormous tracts of real estate, Cowan, who was a tiny man, made no pretensions about himself. He dressed informally and seldom wore a suit. One of his investments was the weekly newspaper The Cicero Tribune and from then on he became known as a publisher. However, he actually had almost no dealings at all with the newspaper. When Al Capone established his headquarters in Cicero, he took a liking to Cowan and gave him dozens of opportunities to make money. He also appointed Cowan as his chief bondsman. When Capone Hood's Anselmi and Scalisi were charged with murder it was Cowan who appeared in court with $8,000 bail. In 1931 Cowan was allowed to settle a $53,000 tax lien with the federal government without fines. It was later learned that Cowan had been feeding information on Capone's income to the feds when Capone went on trial for evasion that year and in return the government went easy on him concerning his tax troubles. There was talk that he had been involved in financing a mail truck robbery in very late 1932. It was also known that he had steadfastly refused to kick into Capone's defense fund or offer jobs to any of Capone's men, who were then under intense federal scrutiny. But it was the pending release of Ralph Capone from federal prison that many saw as the reason Cowan was killed. When Al Capone fell into tax trouble Cowan almost immediately took over Capone's Cicero gambling rackets and Ralph wanted them back. In mid-1933, just weeks before his assassination, someone had tried to kidnap Cowan at gunpoint. Cowan's brother-in-law. Leroy Decker, who resembled Cowan was seized in Cicero by four men who demanded a $50,000 ransom. Only after a long argument, could Decker, who had been held by the kidnappers in a basement, manage to convince them that they had kidnapped the wrong man. After that incident Cowan started carrying a gun and moved into the same hotel as Korngold at the Griamere Hotel. On the day Cowan was killed, Sitting in his car on Roosevelt Road near the Chicago Cicero boundary he was carrying an envelope with 8,000 in cash. Seconds after the shotgun murder, witnesses saw the money on the seat where Cowan had been sitting. Korngold testified that, at 11 o'clock Friday morning Cowan told me to meet him at 5.45 at Roosevelt and Austin. He was going downtown to lunch and then to Sportsman's Park. I stayed at the hotel all day and I didn't talk to anybody or tell them where I was going to meet Cowan. I took a streetcar to the corner and stood there reading a paper until I heard him holler to me. I went over to the car and as I got in I heard the shots. I opened the door and rolled out into the street. I didn't see the car from which the shots were fired. I ran back to the car and saw Cowan's body slumped beneath the steering wheel. I moved the body over and drove the car to the Francis Willard Hospital. Cowan had been hit in the head and neck from the blast. He was declared dead on arrival at the hospital. He was only 37 years old. When asked about the missing cash Korngold explained that it probably got pushed to the gutter when he moved Cowan from the driver's seat. The 12,000 in diamonds Cowan was wearing was untouched. The catch included a diamond-studded belt buckle from Al Capone Cowan's estate was worth $200,000, a fortune at the time. He was a part owner in the Sportsman's Park racetrack which he bought for $50,000 cash a few weeks before he was murdered. His fortune was distributed among his large immediate family. Cowan's suspected killer was George Porky Dillian. With Korngold dead and undoubtedly financed by his new $8,000 bankroll Korngold went into the gambling and vice business in Cicero. Unlike Cowan, Korngold was ready willing and available to work with the outfit. Korngold's wife, Lenora was 17 years his junior. Korngold's brother-in-law and business partner was Casper J. Siapetta. It was Siapetta who used the name John Carr, a one-time policeman in the Levy District, who set up a series of businesses for Joe Iapa in Delaware, allowing the hood to take advantage of that state's lenient tax laws. As a cop, Siapetta, aka John Carr, had dealings with the international con man John, Jake the Barber, Factor and was involved behind the scenes in Factor's kidnapping hoax. 
From 1945 until 1950, Corn Gold was a partner with gangsters Willie Heaney, a former Capone gunman, Joey Oipa, and Louis Campagna, another former Capone bodyguard, and Claude Moore also a former Capone gunner, in a series of large and very profitable casinos, including the Turf Club on Cermak Road, the El Patio and the Austin Club. Pressures brought on from the Kefauver Committee closed the clubs. Campania admitted before the Kefauver Committee that between 1937 and 1940 that his share of the profits from El Patio and the Austin Club amounted to $204,000, which allowed him to purchase an 800-acre estate near Fowler, Indiana, which federal investigators valued at $175,000. A second estate he owned near Berrien Springs was valued at about $75,000. The committee also found out that Paul Ricca owned 2,200 acres near Kendall County Hill about 25 miles outside Chicago, an estate in River Forest and another estate in Long Beach, Indiana, which burned down under questionable circumstances shortly after the Kefauver Committee discovered Ricca's ownership. In the early 1950s Cowan was gambling boss of Cicero but for the most part, in his day-to-day -day chores, he was a pimp. When Heaney died suddenly on July 13, 1951, Corn Gold became the owner of the legitimate bars he and Heaney owned together, and according to the Chicago Crime Commission, Corn Gold and Louis Shortpants Campania inherited all of Heaney's rackets as well. Most of Campania's illegitimate income was derived from his partnerships with Corn Gold. When Campania died on May 30, 1955, Corn Gold inherited his operations as well. In the 1960s, Corn Gold and his occasional business partner Joe Amato, aka Black Joe, boss of the rackets in McHenry County, had considerable real estate interests in Arizona and lived several doors down from each other in the same condominium complex. Corn Gold was active in the until the 1970s. He died on December 15, 1979, at the age of 84.